All right, quick video to show how we laid out the latest alliance. This is probably my best build yet. Um, not perfect, but damn close to perfect. So we started off first by getting an area, a big square area. Um, you could have it bordered with rocks. I don't know exactly the size. You'd have to kind of calculate how many castles you're going. But you want just big kind of plateau with, you know, rocks around it. So get yourself a big flat square area. You can have rocks in there depending on what's available. Um, spend your time scouting. The less rocks you have, the better. You know, like I have some rocks over here. You can't build castles there. So to start, I always place the fort first. You know, you have to do that. Once you do the fort, you leave room for two spots and then the gates. And the reason for this is the gates are key to everything you do. You need to, to run the gates efficiently, you want to get from point A to point B fast. So to do that, you have eight boxes that are around you. Right? You have three here, two here, three here. So you want to make sure that all your, not necessarily the strongest castles, the ones with the most rally capacity. They usually are the same person, but if you have to choose, go with somebody with the big rally cap. Um, easiest way to find your rally cap is start a rally and see how many people could join you. So once you have the two spaces, you want to put your, basically your R5 goes next to the gates, close to the fortress. Because you want to run the events at the gates, but you also, during the Spectre Raid, need to be close to the fort. You know, typically your R5 is the strongest member. Um, so you want to get in there first because when you run the Spectre Raid, your rally capacity also means a great deal to how many troops fit in the fort. So once you get that figured out, you want to carefully figure out who's going to be in these spots around it. So you get your biggest members, you put them in there. If everybody's not online, you get, you know, you want to get at least three people to come with you. Nobody else, you got to make it clear, nobody ports or else, you know, you spank them, you demote them, you do whatever you got to do to make them stay home. Um, you don't share the coordinates until you have to. So once you get your heavy hitters around here, if there's open spots, you put a camp out. Like you see there's... Next to the gate, somebody, you know, went away. You know, it's right after we started killing other people. So some of my big people are away. You don't put the camp here next to the gate. Because if you do that, somebody could port in here. The next person that ports in is going to be next to that. And you'll have a dead space in between. You want to make sure there's no dead spaces. That's your enemy when moving a for, uh, an alliance. <clears throat> so if you're going to camp to keep them out... You put one camp here, and that's enough to save these three spaces. Nobody could fit between you and the gate. Same thing, you go here, nobody could fit over there. So when you first put your castle down, you're going to have a square, four corners. You put one tower in one corner. You put, where's my other tower? Another tower in the other corner. And you do the same thing. The four corners of your box get your four towers. That's the most room you're going to have for an alliance. Once you have your four towers placed around that square, you'll see you have a much bigger square. Everything is still square and nice and even. <clears throat> as soon as you have your gates set up and everybody in there nicely, what you want to do is have your R5 port somewhere else. You don't want to port here because that's going to fill up pretty quick. You want to get your regular members by, like, after I set the gates, I port it over here. So anybody who used an alliance teleport is going to go close to me over here and fill up this area first. After that filled up, um, we had some people, you know, I just kind of bounced around. Like if I went here, that would fill up this area. If I, if I port it here, you know, the first eight people are going to fill up around me. Then I would port over here because I don't want to stay here 
because what's going to happen is people are going to keep going out and out and out and they'll be too far away to participate in events. So you want your R5 to bounce around, tell people to use Alliance Teleports. An Alliance Teleports ports you as close to your R5 as is open. A Fortress Teleport brings you as close to the fort as possible. <clears throat> so when you first start moving, you want to build your fort quickly as fast as you can. Everybody builds the fort. This way, the people who start coming are going to use Alliance Teleports. If they don't have them, they wait till the fort's built, and then you could buy Fortress Teleports in your Alliance store. Uh, where's my store? Hold on. See, a Fortress Teleport is 50,000. A Advanced Teleport is 120,000. You can't buy an, an Alliance Teleport unless you're buying it in packages. So if people want to come, they'll either have an Alliance Teleport already, or you have them buy a Fortress Teleport, or you can use Advanced Teleports, but I leave that for last. You know, I never want to waste that much of my Alliance money on Advanced Teleports. You do want to buy an Advanced Teleport rather than make your people use gold. You also want to make sure, like, see right here, I have three members on the border, outside the border. They're not getting the alliance benefits of um, all the benefits that your alliance has. Mostly it's the food. You get, you harvest crops faster. You get a lot of attack and defense bonuses. These people, I actually have to tell to move. I didn't notice them till just now because they're not in the border, the green border. So they're not going to get the benefits. Even if you're halfway in and halfway out, you don't get the benefits. So it's pretty simple. I mean, you know, once you do that, it's just a matter of making sure people don't random teleport. Like, you know, if you have somebody random teleport and they leave an empty space, you're never going to gain that space back. You know, everything's going to be off. Your best use of space, and the reason I could fit everybody so tightly together is because we did it nice and even in rows with no dead spaces. I mean, you lose spaces around the um, around the towers, so you try and make it so there's a rock next to your tower, so you're only wasting two spaces and not four. You want this guy not to be next to the tower. You want him to be in line with all the other people. This guy. I can't target him. So if he was over here, next to the tower tight, everybody will be off. And the reason that's an advantage is when you're doing attacks or if you're doing events, you want the shortest travel time. You want everybody grouped together as much as possible. So I think that's about it. Oh, also your other buildings. Um, where did I put them? You always put them on the outskirts. I know we saw them before. Here we go. Your hole of heroes, your warehouse, and your silver mine. Put that in the corner. So you got to travel a little more to the silver mine, but now that's not interfering with where all my castles are. Hole of heroes, you never have to go to. Warehouse, if you send stuff, yeah, it takes a little longer, but it's tucked nicely out of the way. Silver mine, you can always move that. You know, I always blow that up every Spectre raid because people are always in there mining and I want them home to defend against the raid. So that comes and goes. You can move that if you really want. Um, and that's about it. And if you look, we have tons of space. The other reason you do it tight like this too is if somebody's going to come in and attack me, they could go here on the outskirts. By the time they get to me or my fort, they got to travel all this distance. You know, from my castle, this is what? I can't tell. 29 kilometers? A march takes so much longer when you do it that way. If I have a hole, if I have a space, like if this spot was open and we weren't, weren't camped there, somebody can just jump right in, port into the middle of your hive, and attack all your key players fast. You always want to keep your hive protected. You want to keep it tight. You want to make sure somebody's going to come in. They're going to travel as far as possible. 
same kind of strategy we'll use in KVK when we get there. That's about it. I can't think of anything else. That's a good start for you.